Hey guys, you're watching following this in-depth video review of the Sharp FX, which is available right now through AT&T. It has a contract price of $99.99, so it's a mid-range handset. It actually follows closely to the Sidekick line devices just because it's uh, manufactured by Sharp. As you can tell, it has a similarity to some of the, uh, the Sidekick handsets out there. But as we said, it's a mid-range offering, so we'll hopefully find that it has a pretty good mix of features suited for the text messengers out there. When you take a close look at the Sharp FX, you'll begin to realize it has some design similarities with the Motorola Sidekick slide from a couple years back, just because of the way the sliding mechanism happens to expose the keyboard. But we do like the industri somewhat industrial look of the handset. It has some hard lines with some curved edges. It's primarily made out of plastic, and uh, the back employs this soft touch coating on it to uh, repel scratching. It's not that too, it's not that bulky at all. It's uh, you definitely feel the weight to it, but it's not that big and the pockets are in the hands but we did have some cause for alarm just because there's a slight wiggle with the touchscreen when it's closed. So what you've got in the Sharp FX is a 3 inch WQVJ capacitor touchscreen which has support for 262,000 colors. As you can tell the colors look rather rather washed out looking and on top of that text is a little bit on the fuzzy side and we would have liked to see it a little bit larger just because there's a lot of uh, empty space around the handset. The biggest thing that we found with the touchscreen is the fact that it's very unresponsive especially recognizing your touch or gestures. It just seems to uh, not accurately uh, register it. Right below the touchscreen, you got these uh, dedicated physical buttons. You got your send, end, and back and clear. Even though they're they're flush to the surface, they offer a really good responsive feel. On the left hand side, you have the volume rocker, micro micro USB port, and three and a half millimeter headset jack. While on the right, you have a dedicated shutter key and also a lock unlock button. On the back, you have the two megapixel camera with the speakerphone. And when you remove the back cover, you'll get access to the uh, battery, SIM card slot, and the micro SD card slot. There's a spring action mechanism employed on the uh, Sharp FX when you're opening and closing it, so it doesn't take too much of a push to get it to open up. But uh, we did find that it still kind of wiggles when you have it open. Now the thing with the keyboard is that it's a four row system. Um, they're kind of flush looking to the surface, but they're actually a little bit rounded towards the middle. So they do have a really good distinction, even though they're pretty close and tight. We do like the fact that it's pretty comfortable holding the uh, device in your hand, and when you're typing, it makes for a really good experience. Unfortunately, we weren't too thrilled with the interface found on the Sharp FX because it doesn't have that level of presentation that you see on something like uh, Samsung's TouchWiz interface for their feature phones. And it's also a little bit confusing, and we'll show you why here. So you have the home screen, you have the icons down here to get some into some of the uh, quick functions of the handset. You think that swiping left to right or right to left will reveal a new uh, panel, but unfortunately, it just launches uh, applications. And what we got is uh, if you swipe up, you're going to be, you'll have AT&T Social Net, IM, My Stuff, and Mobile Web. So, for example, if I just swipe this way, it's just going to launch the application for the web browser. Nothing too fancy, tell you the truth. And we would just like to see it uh, something a little bit different, especially when uh, Sidekick is known for their unique looking. Uh, interfaces out there. As far as the platform in general, um, it runs pretty fast. There's no evidence of any lag. Yeah, this is the main menu here, broken down to three different panels, and they're all finger-friendly size. Um, so the experience is pretty simple and easy to get into, but we find that the, uh, the inaccurate touch rate to be still frustrating throughout the platform. Thankfully, we're presented with a good web browsing experience thanks to Opera Mini. And just like other AT&T phones that employ it, it automatically will resize the text to fit the length of the display. And on top of that, it just makes for a really satisfying desktop-like experience. Typical to other feature phones on AT&T's lineup, the Sharp FX has just a basic looking music player, but it is quite functional. As far as the quality of the sound from the speaker, it was rather sharp in tone, and unfortunately, it was kind of weak too. The only type of videos that will play in the Sharp FX are 3GP ones. Unfortunately, it did not load up any of our MPEG-4 or ones are coded in uh, H.264. So what we have here is just a video playing from YouTube. And as you can tell, the video is kind of stuttery and kind of slow, choppy looking as well. And on top of that, the uh, washout look of the screen doesn't make for an optimal experience. It's somewhat disheartening to find a device like the Sharp FX being a mid-range one to offer a 2 megapixel camera. Uh, we would like to see that a little bit bumped up to probably a 3, but luckily it produces some really good images, especially in outdoor conditions where, where detail was pretty high, uh, but colors were a little bit on the subtle side. Indoors though, it took a little bit of a dime just because uh, they look somewhat fuzzy, especially in low lighting sh in conditions, and on top of that, colors look somewhat washed out. 
If you're looking to take videos, you might want to look elsewhere just because the Sharp FX only provides for QBJ video capture and it's shot in uh, 15 frames per second. So not only are they pixelated looking, they're really stuttery and you definitely notice a lot of uh, choppiness with them. Calling quality on the Sharp FX wasn't that great just because on our end we did hear a lot of distortion on our end and also voices had a slight hiss to it to make it very difficult to hear our conversation. On our caller's end they did say that our voices also did sound somewhat muffled and the experience overall wasn't that great. When we switched over to using the speakerphone though uh, it was still kind of weak in uh, volume um, and when you set it to the highest setting you do notice some echoing. As far as battery life is concerned with the handset, we managed to get 7 hours of talk time, which is pretty impressive when you consider the fact that the manufacturer has it rated for 3 hours of talk time. As far as signal strength, uh, we didn't notice any fluctuations with it, and it managed to retain a solid connection to the network. Although it's the first time we're seeing a Sharp device being made for AT&T, the Sharp FX isn't really as compelling being a launch handset just because when it's priced at $99.99, it does look better than the LG View Plus uh, just because of its styling uh, set of features and of course the uh, nice keyboard on, on board. But other handsets that have a combination touchscreen and keyboard uh, that are priced cheaper also offer the same features. Especially the interface, there's nothing really substantially great about it. It's pretty much the same thing you find in other AT&T handsets, especially the social networking aspects just because uh, you find AT&T social net application on pretty much a wide array of uh, other feature phones on their lineup. So if you'd like to learn more about this handset or for all the latest cell phone reviews, news, specs, and information, you can check us out at phonerena.com.